Today, we are highlighting the very beautiful purple tang. Welcome back, fellow reefers, to another Pittsburgh Reef Junkie video. My name is Sean, and this is where we take reefing one day at a time. Today, it's all about this guy right here, the very majestic and beautiful purple tang. We will talk about where they are from, the aquarium needed to house them, their diet, as well as their nutritional needs and why you should or should not keep them. Let me know in the comments below if you also have a purple tang or you are wanting to get one in your reef tank. Where are purple tangs from? My purple tang is named Prince. So no, they don't come from Paisley Park in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Originally, they were known to only come from the Red Sea. However, within the past few years, they have been spotted in the Arabian Sea, the Gulf of Aden, and the Persian Gulf. So yes, unless they have been captive bred, they have quite a journey to get into your reef tank. But you will not mistake what this guy looks like. That deep purple body and yellow tail. Very vibrant and very unmistakable. A true collector's piece. These guys are somewhat pricey, ranging between $150 up to $300 and more depending on the size. Which is why you need to take really good care of these guys if you want to keep them for many years to come. That now brings us to the housing of these guys. So if you're asking yourself, what do I need to keep purple tanks? The answer is a large tank. These tanks get big. Purple tanks reach lengths of nine inches. So as a small juvenile, a tank under 100 gallons will work but as it grows, it will need a tank larger than 100 gallons. If your aquarium is too small, aggression will most likely start to happen. These guys love to swim, so give them the much needed area to do that. Lots of open space, as well as properly spaced rock work for them to move in and out of. So what do you need to feed purple tanks to keep them healthy? The answer is nori or dried seaweed. Red or green is fine, but if you have a supermarket that sells fresh nori, that is the way to go. In between meal time, you will find them grazing all the time on your rock work. This makes them a really nice utilitarian fish. My purple tang will also eat pellet food as well when I feed my other fish, which adds to a balanced diet. Now, this is why you should and should not keep purple tanks. Why you should consist of these reasons. Number one, they're a hardy fish, as long as you acquire one that has not contracted ick or velvet. But then good quarantine practice will help. And if you see a sick fish, don't buy it. Number two, like I said earlier, these guys are an amazing grazing machine on your rock work. They are real workhorses. Number three, the beauty and rareness of the fish. Now my reasoning as to why you should not keep a purple tank. One, they get large. Tangs need a lot of tank space to be truly happy. It would just be cruel to try to keep them in a smaller tank than what they should have. Two, purple tangs tend to be very aggressive to other tangs, even tangs of not similar shape or size. I would introduce a purple tang with another type of tang at the same time or consider it being the last fish you choose on your list. Uh, here is a link to my video when I finally brought my purple tang home. So there was a quick rundown on my all time favorite fish, the purple tang. If you're thinking of getting one, I have given you some tips on doing so. If you found this video helpful, then give it a like. Next week, we will highlight the mimic tang, another great utilitarian fish to have in your reef tank. So until then, we will see you on the next one.